Hello, Mustangs. Last lesson, we learned about a positives, that they were interrupters in the middle of a sentence, uh, set off by commas. We're going to continue that investigation today as we look at a few pieces of mentor text and put on our best Scooby-Doo, Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, Encyclopedia Brown, Sherlock Holmes investigation skills to figure out what is different about these or how are they really all that different. So remember that today's objective, you're going to be able to use commas correctly to set off words, phrases, and clauses. So let's look at these following sentences. What do you notice? I went to visit New Orleans, a beautiful but sweltering pit in the middle of August. Sally talked to Jake, her current crush of the week. Mr. Thomas walks by with a fresh pepperoni pizza, my all-time favorite food. Great things are happening at my school, Nichols Junior High. This time I want you to notice something specifically about the portion in red. I went to visit New Orleans, a beautiful but sweltering pit in the middle of August. Sally talked to Jake, her current crush of the week. Mr. Thomas walked by with a fresh pepperoni pizza, my all-time favorite food. And great things are happening at my school, Nichols Junior High. What do you notice specifically about the portion in red? Remember, we just did a lesson over a positive, so maybe you should be on that same train of thought. Think back to the last lesson. What similarities are you starting to notice? Hopefully you're noticing that A, all of the sentences have one comma this time. One comma here, one comma here, one here, one here. Also, hopefully you're noticing that the portion in red is describing the noun or pronoun that comes in front of it. New Orleans is the beautiful but sweltering pit. Jake is her current crush of the week. Pepperoni pizza is my all-time favorite food. And Nichols Junior High describes the school. Hopefully you're also noticing about the part in blue, it's a complete sentence. I went to visit New Orleans. Sally talked to Jake. Mr. Thomas walked by with a fresh pepperoni pizza. Great things are happening at my school. So now we've got a new sentence pattern called pattern six, and it is a sentence comma closer. Notice the sentence is all in green because it's a go. It's a complete sentence. Then we've got this closer, which is in red, stop, slow down, danger, that it's extra information. That closer could be in a positive, but it could be any type of closer, any type of extra information that's being tacked onto the end of the sentence. So the positive or a positive phrase, the closer is extra info. It can be taken out and there's a sentence left over. So if I took out closer, if I scratched this out, I would still be left with a, a whole sentence. There's a noun or pronoun within the positive, but it's not a complete sentence. This is not a complete sentence. Otherwise, we would say sentence comma sentence. This is a portion of a sentence. It could be a word, could be a phrase. It clarifies, identifies, or renames the noun or pronoun that comes in front of it. So remember, the closer is describing something in front. That arrow is going backwards. So for example, no one is weirder than Miss Naz, comma, my English teacher. My English teacher clarifies who Miss Naz is or renames her. This is important for writers because sometimes you, you introduce someone or something into your writing and your reader is guessing about who they are. If I just said no one is weirder than Miss Naz, who is Miss Naz? Is she the neighbor down the street? Is she some crazy person? Is she what you named your pet rat? Like what is Miss Naz? Who is Miss Naz? By adding this a positive, you're clarifying that. Miss Naz and my English teacher, same person, same person, but different identifiers. Miss Naz is the name, English teacher is the job. But now it's also just at the end of the sentence. Because you might have noticed Miss Naz is no longer the subject of the sentence. No one is now the subject. Is is the verb. It, this part in green, no one is weirder than Miss Naz, that expresses a complete thought. Yeah. So this pattern sentence comma closer is more for describing a noun or a pronoun at the end of the sentence. No one is weirder than Miss Naz. Miss Naz is not the subject. She's just the, the object at the end of the sentence. And Miss, my English teacher describes her. So how do we punctuate in a positive that happens at the end of the sentence? Well, it's not that different. Because the positives are extra information, we're going to set it off with a single comma this time. 
Last time we had two commas. This time we only have one because at the end of the sentence is a period. We stop. The comma tells us that what follows is nice but not necessary in order to have a complete sentence. The appositives are just adding detail and clarity. And now they're just adding it about a noun or a pronoun at the end of the sentence. So for example, I really love my dog, Champ. If I remove the word Champ, if I take this out, I still have a sentence left over. I really love my dog. The subject is I. The verb is love. It expresses a complete thought. So therefore, we still have a sentence, but Champ is giving the reader more detail about the dog's name. Sometimes you might have to fix a missing comma, especially like on a test. So for, let's look at example one. My brother loves liver, the worst tasting food on earth. I mean, if you just read that aloud, you can start to hear like, oh, that doesn't sound right. My brother loves liver, the worst tasting food on earth. Hopefully you heard my brother loves liver. Pause, because remember a comma means a pause. The worst tasting food on earth. That phrase, the worst tasting food on earth, is extra information. It gives us extra info, but it also gives us a little judgment about how the writer feels about liver and her brother liking it. So from this, we can use our inferencing skills to understand like the writer does not enjoy liver, but her brother really does. And by him liking it, maybe, maybe there's some judgment there. But notice how the worst tasting food, food is the noun or pronoun that's renaming the word liver, okay? Let's look at a second example. Last night we ate spaghetti and meatballs in an, an Italian dish. You might ask yourself like, hey self, what is the extra information here? And yourself would answer an Italian dish because it's clarifying what spaghetti and meatballs are just in case you didn't know. And then you're gonna need to remind yourself that there needs to be a comma before it. Last night we ate spaghetti and meatballs, comma, an Italian dish. Now remember, we only use one comma because the period, the sentence is at the end. We've got a, a period here. That sentence is completely done. So that's why we only have one comma, as opposed to last time when we had two commas. And there you have it, an Italian dish is describing spaghetti and meatballs. You can also add appositives to clarify and add details. So you could add appositives. My mom really hates Jack. It's a sentence. My mom is a subject, hates is the verb, has a complete thought. However, you might be wondering like, who the heck is Jack? And also, why does mom hate him? Man, Jack must be a real poopy head. Is he the dog who poops on the carpet? I mean, some dogs are named Jack. Is he your sister slacker ex-boyfriend? Who is he? This is the question. So as the writer, you need to add in a positive to clarify that my mom really hates Jack, my pet rat. And I know a lot of moms that probably would hate a pet rat, even if it had a cute little name like Jack. My pet rat renames Jack. It clarifies who he is. And lastly, you can actually use a positive to combine sentences that are simple and repetitive because nobody wants to be repetitive. Repetitive is boring. Joe went to Austin. Austin is the capital of Texas. We have two sentences. Joe went to Austin. Joe's the subject. Went is the verb. Austin is the capital of Texas. Austin is the subject. Is is the verb. But it's repetitive because they both use the word Austin. And repetitive is boring. And the last thing you want to do is bore your reader. So which of the things in the sentence are actually the same? Austin and the capital of Texas. They're the same place. So use one as the appositive. Joe went to Austin, comma, the capital of Texas. The capital of Texas is actually describing Austin. It goes back and it renames or identifies what Austin is. Because if you're not from Texas, you might not know that Austin is in fact the capital. So let's watch one more time. I have two dogs. Their names are Maggie and Sam. Hopefully you're starting to see like, hmm, I have two dogs, two dogs named Maggie and Sam. Here we have two sentences. I could combine them into one. So which of the things in the sentences are actually the same? Two dogs, 
and Maggie and Sam. Those are the same. So I'm going to use one as the positive. I have two dogs, comma, Maggie and Sam. Notice how I got rid of their names are. Their names are would make this a complete sentence, and then we would actually have a run-on. I have two dogs, comma, their names are Maggie and Sam. That's a run-on. That's grammatically incorrect, and we, we want to stay away from that. So I'm just going to take the important pieces of each sentence. I have two dogs, Maggie and Sam. And that's how I'm going to put those two sentences into one. This is my sentence. This is my extra information. Not a complete sentence. Sentence in green, not a complete sentence in red. So remember, to set off extra info like a positives, use commas. Be a positive renames, identifies, or adds detail about the noun or pronoun right in front of it. Be a positive is a word or a phrase, not a complete sentence. And if it's removed, you should still have a complete sentence left over. So if I took off this closer, I'd still have a sentence right here. If you have any questions, be sure to write them down so you can ask your teacher as the guided practice begins. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.